All right, well, we made it through chapter one, and now we're on to chapter two, analyzing transactions. We did a little bit of this in chapter one, actually, but we're going to get into it a whole lot more now. And my my biggest concern with an online class in accounting really starts with this chapter. There are concerns throughout, um, but it's very, very important that you pay very, very close attention because in an in-class setting, uh, you'd probably be okay, but but in an online format, um, those of you who've had a high school accounting might have a, a, a slight advantage, but for the most part, um, this analyzing transactions, this is where we're going to get into what's called double entry accounting. Uh, it can be problematic, so please do pay attention as we move through this. We have some learning objectives here. We're going to um, describe the characteristics of an account, which we've kind of already done that. And we're also going to talk about this thing called the chart of accounts. We're going to describe and illustrate journalizing transactions using the double entry accounting system. Okay, when we actually did a little bit of this using layman's terms in chapter one, now we're going to get into this idea of what are called debits and credits. Okay. Let's see, number three, it says, uh, okay, posting transactions to accounts, and then we're going to prepare what's called an unadjusted trial balance and talk about some errors that can uh, that we might find uh, as it relates to this trial balance. All of this may be Greek to you right now. That's okay. Just do uh, pay close attention and try to stay with me, and I think you'll be all right. Okay, so we already said that you know, we've we've got here on this uh, slide an income statement and a balance sheet, and we've talked about um, we've talked about these things already. So um, we really have already done a lot of this. We've said some stuff like anytime you see an expense, that's a that's an income statement account. Anytime we see the word payable, that's uh, that's a liability account, and so on. Um, couple of exceptions to that when we talk about unearned revenue this is this is a different type of revenue this revenue over here on the income statement has been earned this is not this would be like an advance payment a deposit something like that and um, sometimes we will also have this account accrued expenses um, this is not the same thing um, this could be a situation where we know that we're going to have an expense. We don't know exactly what it is. And so we'll go ahead and accrue it over here as a liability. And it will be embedded in these expenses over here. So, but for the most part, if you see, um, you know, wage expense, interest expense, utilities expense, all of these items, there'll be income statement accounts. Um, da, da, da. Anytime you see the word payable, that is a liability account. And usually, with the exception of unearned revenue, revenue items that have been earned are over here on the income statement. All right. Now, this next concept is uh, is where it starts to get, in my view, a little bit tricky. When we talk about normal balances, it says the normal balance of an account is either a debit or a credit depending on whether increases in the account are recorded as debits or credits. So without knowing anything about accounting at all, I would tell you that um, say for example an item like cash, and we're gonna we're gonna look at a slide here in just a moment. I think it's the next slide in fact cash will have a normal debit balance um, revenue will have a normal credit balance okay so that's all good and and well um, but when we when we think about this uh, let's think about sales revenue for example if if we had one million dollars in sales revenue and i told you that that would have a credit balance well then if we had it as a debit balance that would essentially mean that we had negative one million dollars in sales 
Okay, so as this as we get into this chapter, I think this idea of normal balances uh, will become a little bit more apparent to you. But for now, just do understand that every account has a normal debit or credit balance. And this is the slide I was talking about. We have every type of account here listed. We have asset accounts, liability accounts, and stockholders' equity accounts. These are all under the umbrella of the balance sheet. Then if we look right down over here, we have our income statement accounts, revenue, and expense accounts. And then right over here, we have dividends. And dividends are separate uh, because you won't actually find dividends on the balance sheet or on the income statement. Dividends, um, now we can have dividends payable over here in liabilities, but actual dividends won't show up anywhere. So I want you to think about this for uh, for just a moment. Everything in account, not only do we have balances, but everything in accounting has to balance. So I want you to think about a, a transaction where we... Um, we sell something for a hundred dollars okay and we sell it for a hundred dollars cash and so we would have a hundred dollars here do this as best I can hundred dollars uh, for the increase in cash and then over here I said we made a sale so that's revenue we would also have a one hundred dollar increase to revenue so if this is a debit here, we're going to find out that debits must equal credits here in a little bit. If we debited cash, well, the other side of that is this revenue here, then it must be a credit. Okay, if we do a debit, we would have $200 in debits, and we would have no credits, and that's a problem. Okay, so we don't want that. All right. So again, this will become more evident as we get through some of these slides and look at some examples where we are actually analyzing uh, transactions. Okay, before we get into that, I do want to discuss this concept of a chart of accounts, and it says that accounts are normally listed in the order in which they appear in the financial statements, uh, and this would be always. It's There's never an exception to that. Um, when we talk about a chart of accounts, this is simply a list of all of the accounts that a business may have. Okay. It says here that the balance sheet accounts are listed first in order of assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. And then we have income statement accounts that are listed uh, in order of revenues and expenses. Okay. So let's look at an example here. We have our assets are listed first, then our liabilities, stockholders, equity, revenue, and expenses. What these numbers here over on the left represent, these are account numbers. And I don't want you to get too hung up on these, but I do want to mention them because some of your homework um, may require you to use an account number or a posting reference, something like that. And those will be supplied to you in the in the homework assignments. But as you notice, these numbers are going up. And you'll also notice that there are some gaps here. Okay. And that's in, that's so that if we find an asset that is less liquid than accounts receivable, but more liquid than supplies, we can put it here. Uh, a good example of that might be inventory. Okay, we might say that account number 13 is inventory, something like that. So we generally will use some um, some spaces here, but as we see, we have asset accounts starting with cash, and then um, looks like we're saying that office equipment is our least liquid asset account. Then we go into liabilities. Uh, both of these are current liabilities. If we had any non-current liabilities, they would come after this. Um, stockholders equity, common stock, di uh, retained earnings, and dividends. Now, you will see dividends in the chart of accounts, and you will see dividends uh, on what's called a trial balance that we're going to get into. But remember, I told you, you won't actually see dividends um, on either the income statement or on the balance sheet. Then we have our revenue accounts next, 
and then finally our expenses okay um, so that's it for the chart of accounts right now that's good enough let's think about these uh, since we since we're starting our chart of accounts with balance sheet accounts first let's talk about it and it says the double entry accounting system has specific rules of debit and credit for recording transactions in the accounts uh, the debit and credit rules for balance sheet accounts are as follows okay uh, so increases in assets are done over here on the left side with a debit and increases or I'm sorry decreases to assets are over here on the right so at this time I want to talk about cash and I want to bring up the banking industry uh, in particular when you put money into your account the bank is said to be crediting your account so the cash is going up in your account and they're using a credit well I don't want to get into the reasons why the bank does that um, but I will just say that you are going to have to accept the fact that that's only done in banking it can still be very very confusing because most of you who are beginning business students have had more experience with the banking industry than you've had with accounting okay so every but just trust me when I tell you everywhere other than banking okay assets are increased with a debit okay so I want you to think about this see this little thing here this is called a T account because it kind of looks like a T and so if we were to get five hundred dollars we were to get five hundred dollars we would put the five hundred dollars I'm gonna make it 50 actually so I have to do less writing we would put that over on the left side if we then spent twenty dollars we would put that over here on the right side okay so the twenty dollars here is a decrease the fifty dollars here was for an increase liability accounts we have the exact opposite a debit for decreases and a credit for increases okay this kind this should make sense let's say that we um remember that transaction we had where we bought supplies on account the supplies went up or the, the supplies are an asset so they would go up with a debit but we didn't pay for them so our liabilities would have to increase with a credit all right i think as we get into some practice on this it will make more sense um but this is this 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 takes a little bit of effort this takes some um some time to get this down and we are fortunately going to go over several examples uh, to kind of help you out along the way let's see what this next slide is here okay so we said that assets go up with a debit and uh, decrease with a credit so we it says here assets are resources owned by the business examples include cash supplies we also have intangible assets that we're going to talk about later uh, in the course not this chapter such as patent rights copyrights trademarks accounts receivable those are current assets that's we, we we talked about this in chapter one where we make a sale but we don't get the money right away prepaid expenses okay are assets that's a good example of this is we might pay for six months insurance at a time so we give up the cash that would go down uh, let's say we pay five thousand dollars for insurance cash would go down but prepaid expenses prepaid insurance would go up okay then as we use the insurance the prepaid uh, insurance is going to go down and then our expenses would go up insurance expense would go up okay uh, buildings equipment these are all examples of assets all right let's see what we've got here all right I tell you what this video is already about 15 minutes so let's wrap this one up and we'll start another one after this